Well, hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, this is Ender here, your friendly Elliot Wave analysis. So I like to think, anyway. Um, it's Friday night, half ten in Ireland. The markets are closed in the US. Um, I didn't decide to leave this late. It just happened. That's just the way life is when you've got kids and family to take care of. But anyway, it is uh, Friday evening. Uh, the market's closed. It's been an interesting week. Let's get into it. It may even be a more interesting and uh, explosive next week. And um, I'll explain why I think that right now. Okay, this uh, is Euro dollar. I'll start again on the four hour chart. What we're thinking is that uh, we have three waves up completing wave two, and we may be working on uh, beginning of wave three to the downside. Okay, so uh, the long-term target for euro is well, <laughs> the long-term target for the euro is is abolition. <laughs> so uh, the euro should disappear, uh, but that's going to take time. Okay, uh, so here is uh, the hourly chart euro. So I'm counting this is the wave too high, I'm counting five waves down in wave one, uh, and a possible expanded flat wave two. The reason I think this could be an expanded flat is because this little move in here looks to be in a three-wave flat rather than a five-wave move because we have a little overlap there between this this uh, interim low and that interim high there. So it kind of rules out, well, I suppose it, it could be an ending diagonal, but I would more suit the um, expanded flat wave two, especially since we have... Uh, Pretty decent five wave pattern here. Okay, so what we have in place is now a one two, uh, possible one two, and we could be moving down into uh, a third wave down. Um, the move off the wave C high here looks to be in five waves, uh, and again, we could actually move this from the wave two point onwards. We could move um, all this labeling up by one degree. Um, so this one here would change to a one bracket, and I might do that next week, uh, in fact. Um, okay, so a couple of alternatives that are here is we could have an expanded flat wave B, and we move up into a, a larger wave C, or we could have uh, five waves down into the low, and we could be working on a flat uh, wave too. So all of these um, kind of uh, possibilities are in the mix at the moment, and um, definitely next week should clear up the uh, corrective moves, and we should, excuse me, just take a gulp of tea there, and uh, we should see moves down into a third wave. Uh, so for next week, let's see if we can, we can get a clear enough signal off the end of this wave two here, or a possible larger wave two, and uh, that's what we'll be working with. Uh, probably until the, yeah, let's see, maybe Monday evening at a stretch, Tuesday evening uh, for euro dollar. Okay, so let's get to pound dollar. Pound dollar again is looking, uh, let's get to the short term chart. Yeah, sorry, I switched up the um, wave count there yesterday and I forgot to update my four hour chart as the professional that I am. <laughs> okay. So because we got this um, move down here uh, in, a, in a nice sh a sharp five wave form, uh, and again, a corrective move this today to the upside, I'm looking at a one, two, one, two, one, two pattern. So again, that kind of hangs, hangs in the balance a little bit because uh, we could see a break 132, 34 uh, early Monday, and we might shift to the alternate count again which would view a larger um, wave two underway. It's a tough cookie to crack at the moment because uh, it kind of splits even ways on, on this internal pattern here. You could call it a running flat wave B and we'd move up into a wave C or you could call it easily five waves down with a three wave recovery because this uh, move here off the wave one low does look like a three wave recovery. Um, so this is another um, market that needs to be sorted out by, let's say, Tuesday again. 
Um, I want to see that 132.34 hold, and I want to see if uh, a further run down in a possible third wave to break support there, 129.20. So that's what we'll be looking for uh, early next week. Okay, let's move to uh, dollar yen. This is the four hour chart in dollar yen. We're looking at a, at a five waves up in wave one uh, into 113.17, and then an expanded flat wave two. Again, there's a couple of other ways that we could view this as well, and my my favorite alternate count here would be that we have a, a, ver a larger wave B. Um, I'm calling wave B here in brackets at the uh, summer 16 lows. Um, but you could also view this whole correction off the wave A high. You could also view that whole correction as a contracting triangle. So if you... Um, Let's visualize that for a second. Off the wave A high, you could have contraction triangle A, B, C, D, E. And again, I'm quite confident that we will see further declines in dollar yen, uh, given the fact that the, the current wave count and the alternate count will both uh, call for a, a short term decline into about the 109 area. So uh, I'm pretty confident on dollar yen, as confident as you can be, you know. <laughs> um, so let's get to the hourly chart there. So I'm looking at this um, expanded flat uh, wave two. So you have the wave one high, A, B, and we're working on a C wave. And the target for the C wave is the previous A wave low there. So that would be about 109.70. So if we got a, if we got a touch of 10970 uh, next week then we would call wave 2 pretty much complete and we'd look uh, to the upside again um for a larger wave uh 3 and at that point then we'd look for an impulse wave uh, to the upside with three wave recovery uh, but we'll get to that point first of all we need to see um five waves down complete in wave C so that's what we'd be looking for uh, next week Okay, here's the uh, the Dow, and again, let's pull that back a bit there. Uh, off the high there, we've got a, a nice impulsive pattern um, unfolding to the downside. Uh, we've got a nice uh, bearish uh, death cross there of the movement averages, so um, that also all stands in our favor. And um, there is, I'm viewing, I'm viewing this as a one-two pattern at the moment, but there is a way to view it as an ongoing wave one to the downside, and I'll get into that um, right now. So you could see this as, right now I'm viewing it as one, two, three, four, five, excuse me, five waves down complete uh, at wave one. Uh, and then you could see that as three wave recovery in wave two. But um, you could also view this as one, two, three with a triangle wave four possibly and i've shown that there as a triangle wave uh, four with further declining wave five um expected next week if that is the correct if that is the pattern and we are now within a triangle wave four uh, then we would expect to see a kind of a mellowing out, a kind of a mellowing out of the action over the next while we would probably see dip down into a fifth wave and then a corrective uh, rally back up to about the 20 the upper 25s again so 25 80 100 there um so again we've got to kind of parse that out next week to see which is the um, most likely way uh, that this market will break but If it is the case that we have an alternate triangle wave four happening right here, well, then we should get confirmation of that early next week with kind of continued range contraction. Um, I'm favoring the downside right now because, um, well, I'm just sticking with what I've got really because I think we've got a nice uh, handle on what's happening. Um, I think this is a five wave C wave here, so it does fit with a kind of a um, a flat wave two. So that could be uh, A up, running flat wave B, and then five wave wave C. So that's kind of a three three five um, pattern. And the fact that we got into about fifty percent retracement level, and we kind of sold down in a nice uh, 
impulsive uh, pattern off that high. So for now, the working assumption is that next week will be a pretty decent down week. Um, we need to see some uh, further declines in a possible one two wave off this wave two high, or we need to see a kind of an alternate wave two uh, complete on Monday. Um, and if that happens, then we will know um, that we have uh, some pretty significant trigger levels there at uh, the low 25, so 25, 250 or 240 area. If we get a break of that again, then we could see a run down into um, a larger third wave. So uh, outlook for the stock market next week is a, uh, a very decent possibility that we get a, um, an acceleration lower in a, in a larger third wave. Okay, uh, I don't want to own stocks right now. If you don't, <laughs> if you haven't guessed that already, uh, let's move on to the market that I do like, that I do like to own, and I do own. Okay, so this is uh, gold, and this is the four-hour chart in gold. What I'm I'm tracking here is a one-two pattern and a possible move up into a third wave right now, or oh, we're probably in the middle of that third wave right now. Um, from a momentum perspective, we've got a nice break, a uh, nice uh, bullish break of the um, 200 uh, MA um, by the 50. So we've got a nice uh, bullish cross there uh, on the MAs. And the pattern is working out quite well so far. Uh, we've got a little uh, possible triangle uh, wave four here at the moment. Um, we should see how we should see that conclude by, like, I, I reckon, Monday evening. And uh, the outlook for that then is a, a further run up to complete a third wave up. So let's get into the hourly chart right now. So you can see this is the third wave here. The target for the third wave right now is at 12.67. And that's where wave um, wave three up um, reaches 161.8% extension of wave one up. Uh, and that gives us the target. So right now we've got this nice little range contraction, the compression of the price. And I think it's always hard to call a triangle until damn near the end of a triangle. So you're kind of going out on a limb always calling them. But uh, I think by the way that the market is, is acting, that we should see a breakout of this triangle to the upside. I like the fact that uh, we had this nice um, impulsive move up in a third wave. And there has been pretty much next to no answer the downside against that so it's pretty much a vote in favor of the bullish count right now so for next week i want to see a move up into a fifth wave to complete wave three and uh, let's move on to crude oil now crude oil i'm looking at five waves down and if not complete nearly complete and again on the flip side uh, you get uh, this kind of uh, left shoulder uh, we've got a neckline around $63. We've got a head pattern in. We have got a possible five wave up complete into that, um, that recent high on the head. We've got a nice impulsive five wave move down off that high. We should see a kind of a, a corrective right hand shoulder build over the next uh, week or so. And then, and then sayonara <laughs> uh, for crude oil. Um, I bet the Saudis aren't uh, lining up for this one to happen, but it's going to happen. Um, I think, you yeah, know, well, actually, let's get down into the short term pattern there just to, to kind of parse that out a little bit. So we've got five waves down. We got a triangle wave four there, and we got a break lower out of that triangle today. I think we could be seeing the, the final wave down on Monday uh, in wave five of five of a possible wave one. And there is another way to view this as well. This could be also a wave a one two one two or yeah one two one two pattern. So you could have a series of one two waves also. Uh, either way, the outlook the outlook is for shallow enough recovery back to about the seventy two dollar area, the previous fourth wave, and uh, we should see further declines along with the stock market uh, and a break of key support at 63.94, then that would pretty much confirm uh, the bear market has started for crude oil. Um, yes, in a large degree, five wave moved down. So 
the outlook for next week is uh, a shallow enough recovery uh, to complete a second wave, and then we should see further selling into a third wave down. And so the S&P is next. And the outlook here is pretty much the same as the Dow. I think the pattern might be slightly different, although it might be splitting hairs at the moment because uh, they're so similar right now, the way that they've completed, or the way they've come down off the highs, uh, that they're almost indistinguish indistinguishable. So um, the hourly chart shows a possible ending diagonal wave one, or sorry, uh, leading diagonal wave one, uh, with the expectation that we get a, a wave two, uh, probably by, probably completed by Tuesday evening. So. We should see further selling on Monday to complete wave one and then uh, a three wave recovery into wave two. Uh, again, there is a, a slight possibility that we have a, a, a triangle, contraction triangle ongoing. Mm, I'm a little less confident in the S&P, but uh, it's always, that's it's an option that's open right now. Um, but for, for Monday, I want to see uh, another spike lower to complete a, um, a five-wave uh, leading diagonal off uh, wave two high. And once we have a one-two pattern down, then we'll work with um, identifying some uh, entry levels. So we'll see on Tuesday about that one. Uh, okay, so let's move on to silver. Silver is a bit of a, a kind of a gray area for... <laughs> excuse me, silver is a bit of a gray area didn't mean to do that one it didn't even mean that one <laughs> okay um the four hour chart is not as convincing as uh, gold but nonetheless there is still a definite move up off the low and we could have an expanding wedge uh, wave one and there is always another way to view this but i'm going with the expanding wedge that uh, because you may as well a bad plan is better than no plan, as they say. So if that's uh, an expanding wedge wave one, then we could be working on uh, wave two complete and another one two pattern off that uh, to the upside. There is also the possibility that we have a larger wave two underway. So we could we could see a three, three, five pattern work in a flat wave two. And on top of that again, if you want to make it a little bit more complicated, you could also have wave one and an ABC running flat wave two, a wave one, wave two, a wave one, wave two. So you could have three degrees of one, two waves to the upside. You can pick which one of those uh, you like the best and work with it. Um, for the moment, my, let's say, uh, the, the best alternate uh, count that we would have at the moment is this flat wave two uh larger wave two that uh, could be developing and we'll see if we can if we continue this decline towards support there at 1420 that's what I'd, I'd switch to but for now um i'm working on the assumption that we should see a break of that that um uh, ever present 15 dollar mark um early next week uh, to confirm a third wave up for now, I'm still sticking with the bullish outlook for silver, even though the pattern is not as um, blatantly obvious as it is in gold. Okay, and let's get on to uh, treasuries. Um, the correction in wave two has has expanded and gotten more complex as the day goes on, as the week went on, let's see. Uh, but I'm still of the opinion that we have uh, a wave two correction underway. Um, it's possibly a flat correction. It's a complex flat, obviously. We've got three waves up in wave A. We've got um, three waves down in wave B with an internal wave, an internal wave B of B as a triangle. And then we've got a nice spike up to a higher low. Uh, in a possible one two wave of wave C, so you should see one two three four five complete of wave C. Initial target for um, next week would be it still lies at the one eighteen, the upper one eighteens, uh, possibly up to the fifty percent one nineteen level. 
Um, we've got that previous fourth wave there also. So next week we should see higher prices um, to complete a correction. And uh, at that point, then we will look at uh, identifying an impulse wave down to give us uh, a nice tight entry point to the downside, if that's the way you want to play it. Okay, so for, I think that wraps everything up, doesn't it? Well, that was quick. Um, forgive the monotone, a little less laughing today. <laughs> Probably just because it's so damn late and I'm uh, quite tired. And uh, that wraps up the week. Thanks so much for being with me, guys uh, and gals. And we will see you all back on um, Monday evening. I'm going to finish my cup of tea and then I'm going to go to bed <laughs> to prepare for next week. Have a good one. God bless, guys. Bye-bye.